Hello and welcome. This is the first episode, or you might even call it episode zero, of uh, Online Learning in Weird Times. And we're here today to start about what things we can do um, to prepare ourselves for the onslaught that's happening inside of our profession right now. So those of you who are in the United States, uh, this is not a surprise to you. We've got schools closing down and moving to online learning uh, as we speak. And for those of us in Canada, this is still kind of on the horizon, but when you look across the border here in Windsor, Ontario, uh, we see a number of Michigan schools that are starting to close down, move to online learning, and all the people who have been concerned and worried about online learning uh, are all about to be right, I think, unless we move pretty quickly on this. By that I mean we are not really prepared to take every student, every faculty member online, but it's gonna happen. So then the question becomes, how do we mitigate that? How do we get from here to there? So this is the first in a series of conversations where I'm gonna be inviting people in to talk about their experiences, to talk about what um, they have seen, the things that they're doing at different institutions. And then we're gonna to try to uh, help in the broader cultural conversation around how we're going to be able to um, be as effective as possible in doing this. So I think the first piece of advice, if it's any way that this is somebody who isn't actually like me sitting in the crosshairs of this, um, the first thing I would say is start talking to people who have done this before um, and make sure that that person isn't trying to sell you something. Every one of these institutions has people inside of it who have been looking for your attention to try to talk to you about good online learning for years, and they're still there. Um, they're a little worried right now. Uh, they have maybe a lot of people in their office talking to them about how they're gonna be able to manage to move this, but do have that conversation with them. Do get in the door and sit down and talk to them about what's possible. Uh, here at our institution, we're doing uh, daily uh, lunch drop-ins, so uh, anybody who wants to come in to talk about it, whether they be students or faculty or staff, and talk about the implications should they have to go online. That hasn't happened here at any Canadian institution that I know of. Um, but um, there's a list being put together by Brian Alexander right now that is talking about all the ones that are happening in the States. And that list is getting longer and longer. I won't use the word exponentially, um, but it is getting longer quickly. And so uh, a good time, I think, to start talking about how we can do effective online learning. And that's really the key here is how can we be effective doing this? It's possible, right? It's totally possible. There are um, people who have been researching this for a very, very long time. Um, there are people who have been excellent practitioners both inside and outside higher ed. Uh, certainly online meetings have been things that um, people have been working on for years. I know Nancy White has a collection. I'll post all these links along with the video. Nancy White has an amazing collection of resources that she's pulled together from a variety of other facilitators that she works with. And uh, there are lots of people on the internet right now curating these resources. This is a great set of tweets by John Becker a couple of days ago that pulled together some of his thoughts that you need to sort of put together for a plan for your institution. Um, but at the teacher level, at the learning level, um, you know, there are some basic things that, that you need to be able to do. And, and the first of those is to understand that your goals online can be the same, but your practices are, are inevitably going to be different, right? So if you just take all your stuff and put it online and expect a classroom discussion that you would have in your classroom to work the same way on the internet, it's, it's simply not going to, right? There are things that you do that you bring to a classroom that are not immediately going to translate to the internet place. And I think maybe the thing, the only comment we'll make today about actually online learning is that I like to ask people to think about what they do the first two minutes they walk into a classroom. So if you're gonna walk into your face-to-face -face classroom, what are the things that you do in the first two minutes? You may say hi to the students. You may come in and um, make a giant presentation of faking things out of your bag to make your classroom look serious. I don't know, whatever it is you have to do. You may have a safety speech that you tell at the start of every one of your labs where you tell students to be careful and stay focused and whatever. But really walk your way through what you do in those first two to five minutes in a classroom. 
Ask yourself why you do those things, what kinds of things you're setting up, what social contract you establish at the start of your teaching in a face-to-face -face classroom. And then once you've got that packaged up, once you've put that into a ball, once you've decided what that is and thought your way through it, the question becomes, how do you start to do that in an online space? So how do you make people feel welcome? How do you create that connection with people? How do you create a situation where students feel like their contribution is being validated, that their contribution is important, and that their collaboration with other students, for instance, depending on your classroom, their collaboration with other students is a worthwhile activity for them to do, right? And you could say, well, that's why I grade them, and that may be partially true. But there are all these interstitial moments, all these in-between moments that happen in a classroom, in a face-to-face -face classroom, that you need to find a way of doing them in order for those classrooms to translate. So I think the advice for today is just sit down, think about what you do in a face-to-face -face classroom, not the lecture part, not the handout part, not the testing part, but the interstitial piece. Think about what that is. Think about the tone of voice that you take at the start of a classroom and put that package together. And find an instructional designer at your school, find somebody at your school who has experience doing this and talk to them about how you can take that part of your personality, that teacher part of your personality, and bring that in a healthy way to an online space. Those kinds of things are gonna make your students more comfortable. It's gonna make, frankly, you're gonna enjoy yourself more, and, and hopefully it's kind of a journey of discovery for you. Hopefully that's one of those places where being able to reflect on your practice can help inform your face-to-face -face practice whenever you get back to a classroom, uh, but also it'll make this journey into online learning one of those things that you're gonna be more comfortable doing, right? It puts you in charge of it in that sense. You're not saying, hey, help me with online learning. You're saying, hey, these are the things that are really important to me about when I teach the face-to-face -face classroom, how do you think that uh, I should be able to do that? And if you can't find somebody to, to figure that out, you go ahead and uh, catch me up on Twitter, and I'm happy to provide feedback, not only from me, but from the community of people that I work with. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. We'll see you tomorrow, uh, same time. And uh, I hope you have a, uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, I think we're all gonna need it. Cheers.